Richard, I got to see this at TED, but for our viewers who have never seen this before, what are you wearing? Uh, essentially a jet engine powered flying suit. And you flew, you are flying. This is, this is, this is the future we've been promised for decades. Yeah, it, it's, it's certainly good fun. It, it, it's been a, a kind of long journey, a well, long journey, not that long a journey, but a journey of constantly iterating and adapting. And uh, I'm really delighted where we got to. Even since I last saw you, it's got you know, a lot further forward than I ever imagined. So, uh, and there's loads more to come as well, absolutely loads. Okay, so walk me through the constituent parts of this. There's two yeah. rocket and jet engines on each of your arms. Yes, so yes, two on each arm and they're slightly splayed out and that creates a lot of the stability. And then we used to, when I last saw you, uh, we used to have a pair of the same engines a on the rear. on the back. And between those six engines, you ended up with really quite a nice spread of, of stability. So yeah. if you draw a straight line out of each one, it'd be really stable. And we found that on Mythbusters when we raised a car from fire hoses. Exactly. It was yes. ludicrously stable. Yeah, and, and it actually and wants to be, that. yeah, it actually wants to be stable in that way. And then by making micro adjustments to essentially the vectors, the directions you're pointing them in, you can then adjust your height and you can adjust as I just did there in terms of hovering in front of you. If you were to try and get a machine to do that, it would yeah. be quite a challenge, whereas actually it becomes quite intuitive. I'd argue you standing up or standing on one leg is probably harder from scratch to learn than what I just did there. And, and to be clear, when you say adjusting your thrust vector with your arms, you are an incredible physical specimen. You're an extreme sportsman and you work out all the time. You have, it takes a lot of arm strength to bring to bring that in, doesn't it? it it's actually, it, it's kind of strange. So, so they're pushing directly up in, in the opposite direction from where you're pointing them with up to about 90 pounds, right? So it's a bit like locking your arms out and sort of leaning on a Pushing chair or something, on, okay. right? That's not too bad. If, if you hold them in the right way, it's okay. What actually gets quite hard is actually the, the, the muscle to lift it up. And whether that's on or off, it's the same weight. Oh, it's the weight. Dead lifting. So, oh so, so if you start to tire, then your ability to go down, unless you start playing with the throttles, which yeah. starts to get tricky, your ability to go down starts to degrade because you've got to lift them up to go down. So <laughs> that, you don't want to be doing that. So. Tell me, your development process must have looked very much like those early scenes in Iron Man. Did you fly through any windows? Uh, we didn't do any windows. We didn't destroy any AC Cobras or Ferraris <laughs> okay, or anything. Um, but as per in fact, the TED Talk and the little clips in that TED Talk, um, you can see that in the early stages we were like tethered to stuff and we were falling over and we were learning the balance and there was a real moment where I remember thinking right maybe because there's no rule book for this no no manual yeah. maybe I should sort of spread myself a bit, a bit like a sort of dog so I'm leaning forward and I've got four table legs of support yeah. and it just didn't work at all and actually during a, during an attempt I actually straightened up and actually turned my arms out and actually that really worked really well. I can't quite explain why, but that's exactly what the CGI guys in <laughs> Iron Man show in one of the scenes. He sort of straightens up and, and owns it, right? And we actually sort of accidentally discovered a lot. I mean, it's credit to the CGI guys, right? Yeah, they they yeah. just must have thought about this an awful lot. And yeah, but it's not been an entirely dissimilar process. And what is all of this blinking stuff that's on your chest here? Uh, firstly, I'd say it's a it's a sort of live development thing at the moment. Right. So it's not yes, very so pretty. Don't look too close. Okay. The, the next right. versions are much, much tidier. But essentially, you've got um, originally six little enclosures where you've got an ECU that controls each engine. Um, that is connected to my control box. There's a control box. Uh, that's the Wi-Fi box, the control box here. That converts the signals from my triggers and my kill switch into yeah. what these guys want to hear and they then control the engines. We've actually, as you might notice, <laughs> I've got, got my earplugs in right? one, yeah, yeah. And, and this one's nothing in there because the rear engine is now one big engine which has its own ECU built in, so we don't need those anymore. Although, and, the, these little little guys here, that, they're how we interrogate the engines and the light sequences. And find out how they're doing. Exactly, okay. that, yeah. And you are wearing your fuel tank? You're yeah, wearing... yeah, the two bladders either side. Again, they're development tanks. Really, they just repurposed other tanks. I've yeah. got the custom ones um, you know, back in the UK. Uh, which will give us even longer flight times. For something like this, this will still allow me to fly, in theory, for about five minutes. But, five um, minutes but, but, but I mean, just this? Yeah, yeah. And tell me about the boots. How are they <laughs> not catching on fire? Yeah, I mean, they're, it, it's a bit bizarre, right? So they're, they are synthetic. They're actually anti-rattlesnake born, rattlesnake-proof boots anti from Texas, yeah. right? So they're nice and squidgy, so you can teeth can't go through them. I but just, actually, wow. they're really, really lightweight walking boots, and oh they just gosh. generally keep the heat off. I've, I've flown it in trainers before, it just after a while you catch every now and then a little eddy of hot air and it becomes a bit unpleasant. But as you say, they're synthetic and I mean I've been flying with exactly these boots for you know, 18 months and there's they, not a shadow I, of any damage and yet here it's 700 degrees 
700 degrees centigrade there, and it drops catastrophically it within drops a few feet. I mean, you yeah. landed just a few feet from yeah. me, and it just felt like a hot breeze. Yeah, a bit gritty, but yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but you're well, grit my yeah. teeth. Yeah, it, it's another one of the the, the myths <laughs> that, that, that actually was around. That if you started with a blank piece of paper and tried to build or tried to design this, it would have been one of the reasons why you thought this could never be possible, and it, it was that the heat would be all too unmanageable. But it's not. Okay, so where to? For, this you said this is a development. This is in yeah, progress. Yeah. Where to from here? What's what's your big what's your so, next plan? I mean, there, there's about seven or eight different developments streams that are all running in parallel and all somewhat unrelated so yeah. they all run as fast as they can so uh, I mean we didn't talk about the helmet this is a holographic oh, head-up right. display helmet which takes all the data from uh, the the engines and from the fuel system and then paints all that data onto my visor here so you're so looking at flying. an augmented reality display yeah. just like Iron Man yep <laughs> Oh, that's so, so cool. but, uh, you know, da Daiquiri, the guys make the helmet, and, and then there's lots of AR options out okay, there. But, but yeah. this is just a pretty cool one, and they're working on, on you know future iterations, which get even more clever. And it's not a bad use case because I can't really go looking at dials or looking around. Yeah, I, yeah, I, no, it's nice not. to have it here. Um, I mean, there, there's a really big improvement coming with these guys here. So these are off-the-shelf engines. Uh, yes, the slight, yeah, slightly modified. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are working on a whole bunch of uh, adaptations with the manufacturer to make them much more fit for what we're now using them for because clearly they weren't designed for this. Right. But even the housings, I'm quite excited about that. We've fully caddied up a beautiful kind of organic inspired housing and that's being 3D printed now. Uh, your housing's yeah. being 3D, your temperature proof housing's being 3D printed. Yeah, yeah, so it's aluminium sintered and it's just going to be a beautiful, organic, lovely one piece kind of design. So I'm I very excited about that. Well. Yeah, <laughs> there's that. Um, I mean, we've been talking about yep. some, some of the suit, right? It, mm -hmm. This has got many holes all over the place because of the various stages of iterations. I think we can improve this a lot. We can still add the survivability and the protection, but make it kind of, you know. More badass. Exactly, yes. And, and moving around some of the electronics, some of the batteries, I don't need to be carrying quite so many of these. I mean, it means I can start up half a dozen times, you know, easily. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, I, I will tease you with the biggest exciting yes. thing going, and that's uh, wing surfaces. So aerofoil, the transition, I will say, you're going to love this, uh, the transition, that, that. Right. The transition from vertical takeoff to aerofoil flight. And which uses a fraction of the energy as yeah. well. So you start backing the engines off, you actually start to stabilize with the airflow, and then you can pull up and get to parachute height in a safe way. Can we, can we, can we, can yeah. Can those wings deploy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ah! later on, I know, exactly. You saw how fast, I mean, even in this short space, right? Yeah, no, I've, I was... I've got up to 45, 50 miles an hour, you know, over grass, which is a bit more forgiving if they have a problem. Uh, and I can feel the airflow. My body starts to tip back, even just with the airflow over, over the non-aerofoil human being. So if we start adding a, you know, a little bit of lift, it's just going to be awesome. I, like I said, I, was, I mean, I was Richard's ground support at TED, um, and the increase in your comfort with the yeah. control and flight is radical. You've yeah, been flying yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's the best way of learning. I, every, I was saying to the guys back there that every time I do even a you know, fly for TV or whatever, I'm always flying with stuff that's different. So right, every right, single right. time I'm changing yeah. stuff because it becomes the best opportunity to go and test and learn and adapt. So how long until I can have a ride? I, I, I would say you, you could have a go almost immediately with the, <laughs> with the arm engines and jump around like you're on the moon with yeah, that. Yeah. that that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a comfortable thing. Lighting up the rear one, that starts to become a bit more committing, let's put it that way. But, but a couple of goes of the arm engines. I, from a, genuinely, from a balance point of view, it's not as demanding as you'd imagine. It, I think you could get people to learn this pretty quick. We, we, this is our first day at Comic-Con, and I feel like we could go home. This is the best thing. It's amazing. Richard, thank Good you Good stuff. So much, nice man. to see you again. Absolutely. Talk very soon. Thank you.